Let's build a product display and shopping cart project with React and TypeScript. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we'll apply many previous lessons from my TypeScript series to build a React and TypeScript product display and shopping cart project. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Let's start today by looking at the completed project so you have an idea of what we're building. We just have a simple product display here with three items and I've applied some simple CSS. And then you can just add any of these items to the cart. Now notice in the header we have total items and total price. We have the same in the footer and we'll see those update as we add items to our cart. You can also see that it now indicates the item is in the cart. We can also toggle to the cart view and look at the products in the cart. And you can see we can update the quantity of those items here if we decide to do that. So maybe I want 10 of the widgets and now we've updated the total price and we get that update in the header as well. Now the footer looks a little different because we're displaying that information up here with the cart. We can go back to view products and likewise we could add more items here, but we don't see the quantity here, but we do see the total items increase in the header and footer. Now we won't do anything with actually placing the order today. This is just about building the cart because placing the order could go in many different directions and it involves the full stack back in. So we're just working with React and TypeScript. So when we place the order, we'll essentially just empty the cart and I'll leave that area for you to complete if you wanna integrate with a server. So that's the full project. Let's now open VS Code and start from scratch so we can review everything as we go. I have the project folder for my TypeScript series open. You can see I have lessons one through 15 here. 15 was the last lesson. So today is lesson 16. We've been using Vite in this TypeScript series and we'll continue to do so today to start a new project. So I'm just going to type npm create Vite at latest. Now, if you haven't used Vite before, I do have video in this series about how to get started with Vite, and it makes everything very simple as you create TypeScript projects, and you'll see that right here. So I'll press enter, and it's going to give us some choices. First, we need to name this. I'm going to name it Lesson 16. You might want to name it TypeScript Cart or something like that. And after I do that, I can choose React from this list, and then I can choose JavaScript or TypeScript. There's even a couple of new options with the latest beat, but for today, we're just going to stick with TypeScript here. And now it has completed that install. We can CD into that new Lesson 16 folder it created, that is change directory. So now I'm going to do that. I can type npm i, and it will install all the dependencies needed. After that, I'm not going to start the server with npm run dev right now. I'm going to switch into that Lesson 16 server so we don't have all of these other directories over here in the file tree. So now that that is complete, go ahead and close that. I'm going to open that Lesson 16 server with open folder. I've got my TypeScript series, Lesson 16, open that up. And here we are with our new project. Vite doesn't create that many extra files to clean up, so we don't have a whole lot of cleanup to do. I am going to delete the app.css file. And then I'm also going to add some CSS to the index.css instead of what's here, just some basic CSS today. You could easily change that and make this cart a project of your own design as well. I'll just paste in this CSS that we'll use today, save that, and you can see it's it's fairly short file here. After that, we can go into the app and let's just clean everything out that we're not going to use. So for now, I'll just delete all of the imports and basically everything that's inside of this app component as well. So I'll just leave that div with the class name app for now as the return and empty all of that out. So we've emptied the app component and then the main.tsx instead of an index.tsx. And really we can leave this the way it is for now as well. I'll press Alt Z so you can see that line wrapped down. I am going to add one new directory, not in the source directory, just a new directory in the file tree. I'm going to call this data. And then inside of the data directory, I'm going to create a file called products. I could spell products, there we go, .json. 
And this will just have our product date. And we only have three products today. So three different widgets here. And you can say the JSON here has the products array. And there's the information, SKU, name, and price for each. So let's just save that. And we'll come back to that and refer to that a couple of times in the project. So that's our basic setup. So we're going to create a couple of contexts today, one for each view. Here is the product display view. And after that, we can also go to the cart view and anything in the cart. So we'll have a cart context and a products context. Also, we'll have a header and a footer. And then we will have an area for this products display. And of course, an area for the cart display as well. It also has a header and a footer. So that's thinking about the components in this project. So let's go back to VS Code and get started with all of that. I'll drag this back over to a full screen. Now inside the source directory, let's create a directory called components and let's create another directory inside the source directory and let's call this context. And I almost forgot one more directory because we need some images. And so I'm going to create this and just name it images. And we're going to learn how to pull in dynamic images into our code using Vite, TypeScript, and React. And so inside of this images directory, I need to go ahead and just paste in the three product images for now. And if you were creating a large project, instead of having these images actually with your project, you might be pulling them in from an AWS bucket or somewhere else on the web. However, I think it's important to have images in this project and show you how to dynamically pull those images in when you're using Vite as well as React and TypeScript. So before we ever create an additional component or add anything to the existing components, the app or the main, let's go ahead and create a product context and start thinking about that data we're going to use and how we'll provide it to those components. So here we'll create the new file and I'll call this productsprovider.tsx. Now let's start by creating our product type. So I'll use an export here because we might need to export it later. I'll say type and we'll name this product type. And let's set this equal to something that mirrors those products we saw over here in products.json. So we'll have a skew, and that is a string. We'll have a name, and that is a string. And we'll have a price, and that is a number. And we can verify that if we just quickly look at this products JSON. we have the skew. It is a string, and it has a pattern, it says item and 0001, and you might, often find that when uh, SKUs are named, that there is some type of pattern, we might extract that number later. We have the name and then we have the price that is an actual number. So now let's go back and we'll look at this products provider and we can use this product type when we define the initial state. So here we'll say const init state and it is the product type. There we go, two T's in a row. That gets me, but it will be an array of these product types. Now we could set this equal to this empty array, but for now we have this data here. So without setting up any type of fetch, let's just go ahead and select this and let's start out at least as we begin here by just setting that initial state to that JSON array right here. And I didn't put it inside of the array. Actually, I've got the products on the outside here with the object. So we just need to get rid of that part and just keep the part that is the array as we set that initial state. And now the part that you just saw me delete from this data and just keep the array. So if we look back at the JSON where it's actually an object here that has products and then the array is the value of products, we need to create that type as well because we're going to need that with the context. So just underneath this initial state, let's say export type and we'll call this use products context type and we'll set this equal to an object that has products, and then it will be the product type array. There we go. And now we've created our use products context type, and it does represent the products, then it has that array right there. Now this is not the same as the initial state, of course, and we needed to define that product type above that as well. So we'll need all of this as we go. Now let's define our initial context state. So we can say const and I'll call this init context state. And this is going to be the use products context type. And then we'll set this 
equal to something that looks just like what we have above. But now this is a value, so it's products. And then the initial state here for the context can just be that empty array. Now, finally, we need to create our context. So underneath this, let's say const products context, and we'll set this equal to create context. And if I tab, it should import that at the top. Let's take a look to make sure. And yes, we've got the create context import at the top now. After that, we'll say this is a use products context type. And then we'll pass in our init context state. And it looks like I need to press Alt Z to wrap that code down. But now we have created the products context. And we've used all of the types we've created, but you will notice we have not used the initial state yet, but that is coming as well. We'll use that in the provider. So after we create this context, we now need to create a children type. And if you remember from the use context lesson, you now need to provide that children type as you create a provider in React 18 and above. It used to be okay to have that implicit in older versions, but not now. So let's quickly create that children type to use as well. So I'll say children type, and I'm going to set this equal to children that will be optional. So we'll use the question mark and then a colon, and then I'll say it can be a React element, and I'll press tab and it should import that at the top as well. Or we need to put React element and then have that in an array. So it could be more than one if that was the case. So now let's check that import at the top again. And we do have a React element now imported as well. Okay, now that we have that type, we can start creating the provider. I'm going to scroll for some more room, but let's keep that children type in view. And I'll say export const products provider. And we'll set this equal to a function and we can destructure the children in there. And remember, the children are what's in between the opening and the closing JSX tags. It's not the same as a prop that's being passed down and used. It's something that you put in a component between those tags. Although it is a prop, it's just not really provided in the same way. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to specify the children type. And then we need to say this will return a React element and we can use our arrow function. Notice I'm now using ligatures in my code and I have a short on how to enable those if you want to. So I'm using a new font that is a Fira code font. Looks a lot like what I was using, but it enables these ligatures and that YouTube short can show you how to do that. Now inside this products provider, I'm actually going to use state. I don't have a need for a large reducer inside of this context. So I'm just going to say const, I'm going to have products, also going to have set products, then I'm going to set that equal to use state, and the type would be a product type that is an array. And then inside of that, we will pass that init state from above. So we're pulling that in from the lexical scope. We don't need to pass it in as a parameter. That would just be a little too much boilerplate, and it's really unnecessary since they're in the same file. And I want to draw your attention to that because I did that in the use context lesson. And somebody asked me about it, and I said, you know what? You're right. I didn't really need to do that. Sometimes with TypeScript, I get too far into defining everything and being explicit and really didn't need to do that. So we can just pull that init state from above using the lexical scope here inside the same file. Okay, after we have used use state now, which it doesn't look like it imported that, maybe I needed to hit tab and I forgot to, so let's import use state at the top. Now I'm going to return the product context.provider. So I'm going to use parentheses here and break this into separate lines. I'll have products context dot provider, and then we'll have a value, and this will equal two curly braces, and inside of the curly braces, I'll have products, and then we'll have the closing tag, and in here, as I mentioned above, or maybe didn't explain well enough, but I will try to now, is the children. So we wrap this around the children. Notice they're not passed in like we would a prop like the products, for example. It's actually what's between the opening and closing tags. So the only thing we need now at the bottom here is our export default, and we'll have products context. 
And we've officially completed our products provider, which is our products context here. But what I did was set the initial state and just put it in here kind of statically inside of our file. We're not fetching that. So quickly, if you want to do that and actually use this products.json file, we can do that with JSON server in a dev environment. Now, if you were to deploy this project as an example, I would go back to just keeping it in this file, which would be the easiest. So you may want to skip this step, but I do want to go over it because it deals with a promise and a fetch. And I think that's another good recap for this course. So let's quickly bring in use effect at the top. And I know it's been popular lately to say you don't need use effect and that's fine, but I do not want to bring in another dependency like React Query or something into this small project. We're focused on React and TypeScript. So we can use use effect and there's nothing wrong with it. There just may be better options when you're creating a full project and looking at all the different options. However, we can use use effect to bring in this data. So right now I will comment this out and I could leave it in here in case you wanted to use that instead. And like I said, if you were to deploy, that's probably what you would want to use. But now let's just define the init state and it will be the product type once again. And it would be an array of those product types. And we'll start out as just an empty array. But now let's go down into our provider where we have our products and set products. And notice set products wasn't being used at this point. So what we're going to do is use that along with use effect now. So we'll have our use effect call and our arrow here. And we're going to give this an empty dependency array because really we only need to load the products once. And that is when that component loads or when this provider loads. And so inside of this now, let's go ahead and say const fetch products, set this equal to an async function. And after this, we need to give this the type. And so this is a promise. And now what we expect in return is the product type once again, and an array of those products. After that, we'll have our arrow. And now inside this fetch products function, we can say const data, we'll set this equal to await fetch. And now we're just going to run this local JSON server to serve those products. So I'm going to say HTTP and we'll put it on port 3500. So just on our local host port 3500 and it will be products. After that, let's chain a dot then. We'll get our response, which I'll just type as RES. I have an arrow here and then we could return the response.json. So we have received our data and then we're gonna return that data. And then let's go ahead and chain a catch here. And that's if we get an error. Inside our catch, if you remember from a previous lesson when we showed a promise fetch like this, I think it was in the utilities lesson, we have if error is an instance of error, at this point, we could just console.log and we could log the error message to see what that is. Of course, you could do more with an error if you wanted to as well, but we'll just put in that simple example right there. Now at the very end, we're still not returning the data yet, are we? So we've defined the data here and this is how we get that data. And of course we want it to be JSON when we eventually get it. So after that, we need to return the data. So that's the full function. It's not the full use effect that we're going to have though, because then we need to call this function. So we call fetch products. And then after we call it, we'll chain a then on here. And then we'll have our products. I'll just use an error and as a, a, an arrow. And as a one liner, I'll say set products. And we'll pass in the products that we have received. So we define the function inside of the use effect and it's only called really when this loads. And then we go ahead and call that function, we get the products and we set the products. And we'll get all of that from the JSON server that we start up. So once again, even if you're against using use effect to query data like this, I wanted to give an example of it and it goes over something we covered, the promises. 
inside of the TypeScript series. So we've got all of that. Now we could go ahead and launch this products.json server as far as our dev environment goes. So let's go ahead and do a control back tick here. And after that, you can do it with npx. So I'm just going to type npx json dash server and dash w for watch. And we'll say watch the data folder slash products.json and dash p for the port. He said 3500. And that should be all it takes. We can go ahead and get that running. And yep, it's running now. I'll go ahead and expand this so you can see everything. And this is what you get from JSON server when you do that. So it's running and it looks good. Now, if we want to open another terminal window to run our project when we're ready, we can just do that here and I'll get a second bash instance there. So here is the JSON server. Here's the one where we will run our project when we're ready to do so. And we can close this and it will keep running. With the products provider now set up, let's go ahead and create the cart provider as well. And then we'll just have to pull all of our components together and use the data as we need it. So let's create another file here and we'll call this cartprovider.tsx. And inside of the cart provider, I'm going to create a cart item type to start. So I'll say export type cart item type. And we'll set this equal to a similar item as we saw with the product type. It will have a SKU, which is a string. We'll have a name, which is a string. We'll have a price, which is a number. And it will also have a quantity, which is a number. And that's a new one. Other than that, just about the same, but we'll use it differently in this context. We're also going to have a type that is the cart state type. And let's set this equal to an object that has the cart, and then it has the cart item type, and it will be an array of those cart item types. And now we can follow that up with an initial state. So I'll call this init cart state, and this will be the cart state type that we just created. And now this will be a value, of course, not a type. So we'll now have a cart with an empty array here. And now I want to create a reducer action type because our cart will need a reducer. And so here I'm going to do this differently than I did in the context lesson as well, where I used an enum, which is fine. I know some don't like it, but it can be useful. That's an opinion and I won't go either way. I just used it that way in the lesson here. I'm going to use strings specifically. So I'll just create an object for a reducer action type. So I'll say reducer underscore action underscore type. And inside of this, the properties will match the string. So add is add, remove is remove, quantity is quantity. Might've been easier if I had abbreviated that, but being explicit is okay. And now we've got submit, and those will be our actions for our cart. I'm going to scroll for some room. We'll keep that reducer action type in view. And underneath, I'm going to set export for these types when we need them, and I'll call this reducer action type, but it doesn't have the underscores and it's not all caps, so it's not quite the same. And this will be type of reducer underscore action type. After this, I'll also say export type, and this will be a reducer action. And here, I'm going to say type is string, and this is where we would specify a payload if it existed, so it needs to be optional with question mark, and this would be a cart item type that would come in as the payload. And now let's start our reducer function. So I'll say const reducer, this is going to be equal a function that gets state, which would be the cart state type, and then the action, which is the reducer action that we just defined above that has a type and a payload. After that, it's going to return the cart state type. And I need to press Alt Z to wrap this code down. We'll get our arrow and now we'll have the inside of the function. Now reducer typically has a switch statement for the action dot type. And now we'll specify our cases. So our first case would be case reducer and here we can just arrow through and get action type, and then we can use dot notation to complete. And we'll have add, 
And that would be our first case. Now I'm going to scroll and we'll fill out these cases after we define them. So the next case would be lowercase case, reducer underscore action type, and this would be remove. And I can just copy this down to make it go a little faster. Shift Alt and the down arrow twice because we'll have two more of those. So we're also going to have a quantity here. If I just backspace and delete, we'll get the completion. There's quantity. So again, backspace, complete, and a submit. And then we can't forget there should be a default if things don't go as planned. So we'll have our default, and this would be row new error and we could give a specific message here we could say unidentified reducer action type if we wanted to we'd know exactly where that error is coming from okay so the easiest one to complete is the submit because we're not really submitting to a server we're just going to empty out the cart when we essentially click that place a new order button so here i'll just return and you could put in other logic if you needed to link this to a server or submit somewhere so then we'll just set the cart equal to that empty array, and that completes our submit uh, action for the reducer. Now, if we don't put in some type of guard, we'll essentially get a message from TypeScript saying that the action payload could be undefined or null or something like that. But basically, if it's missing, even though we know it probably won't be, we should go ahead and put in something to catch just in case. And so here we'll say if there is no action dot payload. Now we could throw a new error. So here I'll say throw new error. And inside of here we'll say action dot payload missing in add action. Definitely a message we would expect to get and hopefully catch in development before anything went into production where the action payload was missing. However, we can just copy this now and put it in the next two as well. So I'll put it here and here, and then we'll just need to change what we have here for the add, instead of add, it would be the remove, and instead of add here, it would be quantity. And looks like I put, no, oh, there it is, just quantities and wants. I almost thought I typed it twice or duplicated it. Now we're just fine, and let's come back up to the top. So our add action type is going to need some information from that action payload. So we can just destructure what we need, destructure. And once again, I need lowercase, and this would be the SKU, the name, and the price that we would get from the action dot payload. And now we just want to filter the cart so we have all the other items that are not the item that we're updating. So let's say const filtered cart, and this is going to be a cart item type array that we would get back. We can set this equal to state.cart.filter, and now each item that we go through, we will compare and we'll just say the item.skew should be not equal to the skew that we just destructured above. So now we've got our filtered cart with all the items that we're not updating. And now let's make sure the item that we are updating exists. So we can say const item exists. This would be cart item type because it's a single item, but if it doesn't exist, it would be undefined. So now we've defined exactly what item exists could be as far as types go. Now we'll say state.cart.find, we have the item, and then we can compare the item.sku, make sure it equals the sku. But now we used the find method on that array for our cart. And this will help us determine the quantity that we want to set for the item. So let's define the quantity value and it will be a number. And we're going to look at the item exists. And if it does indeed exist, it would be the item exists dot quantity because we found the item. And then we would need to add one to that item. Otherwise, it will be just the number one because it wouldn't have been in the cart, so it didn't exist, and we just need to add one at that point. And now we're going to return. I have an object here where we spread the state, and then we'll have the cart. And really, our state only has the cart, but this is in case you had other things, it's still a good idea to continue to spread that state in there. And that just leaves it flexible for the future if you wanted to add more. Here we'll have our filtered 
cart, which has all the other items that we're not updating. And then we'll go ahead and put in the item we are updating. So we'll have the SKU, the name, the price, and the quantity. So everything we destructured above and then we arrived at that new quantity that will be set for the item. I'm going to save those changes and it might help or it might be easier to read if we put a line between each one of these that we were defining. As you see it wrapped down, it starts to get just a little confusing there. So there's the extra line. Now you can see everything we did on separate lines here. Now I'm going to copy these two lines here where we destructured and we define the filtered cart and I'm going to move down to the reducer action type remove and underneath this I'll paste these lines in and there won't be much to change for them. But all we really need here is the SKU. We do not need the name and the price so we'll only destructure the SKU. And after we do that it's really easy to set up the return because we've filtered the cart and we're removing the SKU. So now we just say return and we have an object here and we'll once again spread in the state and we'll have our cart and this array will just have the filtered cart items spread in and that's pretty much all there is to it. So we're just excluding that SKU. Okay, before we move on to the quantity payload or the quantity reducer action type I should say and the payload that is associated with it, I'm going to scroll back up once again to the add reducer action type and I'm once again going to copy not only the destructured line, the filtered cart, but also the item exists line. We'll use those in a little bit different order down here logically, but we will use all of those so I won't have to modify them too much to use them. So I'll just paste them in for now and as far as the destructuring goes, we're just going to need the SKU and the quantity this time. So Q2Y at that point, or QTY at that point. We will need the filtered cart, but it's going to come later. So I'm going to cut it out and we'll check the item exists first. Now after the item exists, if it doesn't exist, we can't really update the quantity for that item. So let's go ahead and put in another guard here. And I'm just going to say if item exists, and it, it, what we're saying with the exclamation mark is if it doesn't exist, now we're going to throw a new error. And this error can be item must exist in order to update quantity. Now you could handle that in a different way if you want to, but that's what I'm going to do here. And it's essentially a type guard saying we're not going to go any further. We're going to throw an error if we're trying to update the quantity of an item that doesn't exist. Now after that, let's go ahead and define the updated item because we should be able to do that once we've confirmed that item does exist. So updated item is going to be a cart item type. Let's set this equal to spreading in the item exist properties and adding the new quantity. Now after that, we've got the filtered cart once again and that is defined in the same way. And now that we have that, we can return what we need to for updating the quantity. So we'll once again, spread in the state as we should. We have the cart and it's a new array and it gets the spread of the filtered cart items. And then we're going to have our updated item in that array as well. Now that completes the different action types and that's quite a bit there really and just a little different order of logic. And maybe you find a different way to do it, but that has worked for me. And so we'll go from there and have the reducer with add remove quantity and submit action types. Now going back to the use context lesson we had in lesson 15, we're going to create a use cart context here. So we'll say use cart context, but we'll only call this function in this file when we create the provider. It's going to have the init cart state, and that would be the cart state type that we defined above. After that, we're going to use state inside of here. Actually not state, I'm sorry, we're going to use the reducer that we just created. And I'm just going to define this as state. And then we'll have our dispatch right here. Now, after that, we can say use reducer. We pass in that reducer function. And this is where we'll use our init cart state as well for the use reducer hook. And it looks like I need to import that at the top. I should have hit tab and I did not. So we'll say, import 
use reducer from react now with the use reducer imported i'll scroll back down and we're underneath our reducer action function there and we have our use cart context hook that we are creating and now we're going to define reducer actions that looks a lot like our reducer action type but i'll just call it reducer actions because what we need here is use memo to memoize the value of this object and so we're just going to wrap it around that object and we're going to pull that in from the lexical scope above so we have reducer action type that we're just returning here and this will be an empty array and so what we have done is memoize that reducer action type so it's always so it always has the same referential equality when we pass it into a component and that will help us memoize the component in the future without worrying about reducer actions causing a re-render so now let's define the total items that we're going to display so we'll say const total items and let's set this equal to state dot cart so we're getting the cart there and we'll use the reduce method and we'll get the previous value and then we'll also have the cart item and then after that we'll have our arrow with the function and we're going to return the previous value plus the cart item dot quantity and now of course the reducer needs to start with an initial value and that will be zero and i've got some squiggly red lines because i typed reducer instead of reduce once i remove that everything looks good and we've defined our total items now let's mouse over total items and see what we get here we can see that is a number often when i'm defining something i like to specify what type that is so another developer could quickly look and go hey i'm defining a number here that's what i'm creating as i create the total items but that could be overly explicit for you. And at that point, you wouldn't have to do that because TypeScript is going to infer that as well. So if we delete that and we mouse over, we get the IntelliSense and you can tell that it's a number as well. So I'll leave it without and I'll leave that choice up to you. Now I'll have total price. And this is going to be equal to a new international dot number format. And this will help us format the currency that we want to display. Now you could look this up on MDN to see all the different ways to set it. I'm going to set it to uh, US and then I need a capital S there. And then I need an object here that has a style and we say currency. And after that, we say currency is going to be the US dollar that will display in this application. Now you could set that differently for yours if you want to. And then we're going to format it. And now this is where we're once again going to use reduce on the cart. So I'll say state.cart.reduce. I'll have the previous value and the cart item once again. And after that, I have our function and it's going to return the previous value plus the cart item.quantity times the cart item.price. And that is not what I wanted at all. I need the cart item dot price. And then we need our curly brace after that. And oh, I guess we don't, we have it down below, but then what we do need is the comma. And then we start off with a zero because that starts out the reduce with the initial value. However, I can see I left a parentheses out here at the beginning. So once we add that second parentheses that's wrapped around previous value in the card item, everything formats like it should. And this is creating our total price. Now notice when we look at the IntelliSense, total price is a string because now that we've formatted this, we're not even going to have to display the dollar sign and concat it together with the number value. This is going to create all of that for the display for us. And finally, we want to sort our cart in order. So let's create a cart and let's go ahead and have this be the state.cart.sort. So we're using the sort method here and we'll compare A and B. And now inside this function, we need to define item A first. So we'll say item, let's use a lowercase here, item A is going to be equal and we need to wrap it in a number. We'll have a.skew and now.slice. So we're really extracting 
those last four digits of the item number, which was a number. If we look back here at our data in the products JSON, you can see we have item then 0001. So we're gonna extract these four numbers and we can do that as we see here with slice. After this, I'll just copy this down with shift alt and the down arrow and we'll have item B. And this is going to be b.skew.slice minus four. And after that, we can actually return the comparison. So item A minus item B. And this will put the cart in order essentially. So item one would always be above item two in the display when we look at our cart. Okay, finally to finish this hook, we just need to return everything we've defined. So we're going to return, we'll have dispatch here. And now dispatch is nice because it keeps its referential equality. It will not cause a new render when we pass it down. And we have memoized reducer actions. And so that won't cause a re-render either. These others possibly could, but we'll of course create custom hooks to pass some of these in as well. So we might not pass those down as props from a parent. So we'll have total items, total price, and the cart. Now, of course, I just said we'd create custom hooks. That doesn't mean they won't cause a re-render. It's just another way to approach it. And memoization only helps like when we would use react.use or react.memo, pardon me. That would only help if we were passing things down as props. So we'll see how we organize all of that when we get to the components. Okay, we have now completed our use cart context hook that we will be using. So underneath this, it is time to think about creating a context. So let's take the steps necessary here. We'll export type use cart context type. And let's set this equal to return type. And now we'll just say type of use cart context that we defined above. So that's a nice shortcut, which gives us the return value from this hook. And as we look here, or with the return type, and we can see it's defined well where we get the dispatch. And now we can see the type of the dispatch. We have our reducer actions, total type, or total items, total price, and the cart, which is the cart item type array. Now I'm going to scroll up, but let's set up some initial state here for the cart context. So I'll say cart, or const, init cart context state. And here this would be the use cart context type. And I'll set this equal to, and now we'll have our object with dispatch. And again, this is just an initializer function here. So I'll put in the operators, have our arrow and an empty object. We'll have the reducer underscore actions. And this is the reducer underscore action type. And we know that because that's essentially what we memoized and made sure that it would be that type. Okay, for total items, we'll just start out at zero. Total price, remember, is a string. So we'll just make that an empty string. And the cart can be an empty array. So this is just our initial state that we'll pass into the context. So now we're ready to create that context. So we'll say export const art context equal to create context. This would be the use art context type. So we need that at the end as well. And now here we'll use the init art context state. And I believe I probably didn't hit tab when I typed create context. I need to get in the habit of doing that. So we need to import the create context at the top. We put that in and save, and we shouldn't have a problem now as we look back and create that context before. Oh, here we do because I, I believe I did hit tab. Notice the difference. I used the underscore here, or not the underscore, the lower case. And now I need a capital U for use cart context type to match that. Now that I have the right type defined there, everything looks good. We're almost finished with this context. So let's go ahead and define the children type again. And this will be essentially equal to that same children type that I defined in the products context. So you could keep this in another file and import it to use in both if you wanted to export it from that file, of course. But here we'll just redefine it with children and oh, it should be optional. 
And then we should have React Element. And I'm going to hit Tab so it imports it, or React Element and an array of those elements, essentially, would be the type. Now we're ready to create that provider. So we'll say Export Fonts. Let me scroll for a little more room, and we'll call this Art Provider. Set this equal to a function that brings in the children. And that would be the children type. And now we need to say it returns a React element. Follow that with the arrow. And inside of our function, we just need to return the cart context provider. So I'm going to say return. I'll use parentheses. This would be the cart context dot provider. And now we'll pass in the value. And we'll just get this once again from the lexical scope. In other words, we're not passing it in as a parameter here, but we're going to pull in the use cart context hook that we created above. So that's in the lexical scope up here. As I scroll up, here it is. And then we're also going to pull in the state that it needs to receive, and that is the init cart state. Now that we have done that, let me go ahead and get rid of that extra parentheses there. We're pulling this in from the lexical scope as well. Now that we've done that, we just need to close out that provider with the caret, and we get the closed cart context dot provider. And in between, once again, we need to put the children right there. And now we're essentially finished, except for the export default cart context. Now I'll save this file, quickly scan back to the top to make sure we don't have any other errors. I don't see anything in visual code. We usually see a red mark in the scroll bar if it exists. And we have all of the imports we need here as well. So now we've created our products provider and our cart provider. And that is a large part of actually creating this whole project. And now this has already turned in kind of a long tutorial, so I'm going to break it into a couple of parts. And in the next one, we're going to pull all this together with all the components and finish this TypeScript and React project that creates a product display and a shopping cart. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.